Kendrick Lamar, Section 80. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. A little stuffier than usual because my sinuses are acting up. And it's time for an album review, Kendrick Lamar, Section 80. Kendrick Lamar is a California MC from the city of Compton, a city that a lot of rappers like to represent and, and flash around to kind of show how tough they are. And Compton does come up a lot in Kendrick's case, but only because his mindset is so against the mindset that usually gets tagged on the city. Section 80 is Kendrick's full-length debut. He's done the tape thing. He's done a lot of good feature spots this year. He is getting bigger, but I'm not gonna say this guy is for everybody. Kendrick's voice is a little nasal, and his inflection, his delivery, is a little too underwhelming to be thrilling to me. But he's not really going for one of these stoned or, or blunted personalities. It's a problem I've had with his past stuff. The enthusiasm is turned up a little bit more on Section 80. It's not where I'd love for it to be, but I still enjoy listening to this guy's music a lot. And that's because he's really thought-provoking. I love his flow, I love his wordplay, I love his his rhymes, his words, what he is saying. If there is one thing I cannot attack Kendrick on, on any level, uh, that is substance. He's always got that. He's always got something substantial to say. And until I looked up Kendrick's age, which I think is 23, I had a hard time placing his age. He sounds really, really young. He has the hunger and the will to experiment that a young artist would have. He's spitting on a lot of beats that older rappers might see as too soft, too melodic, or even too electronic. Like on No Makeup or Tammy's Song, or even the jazzed out spoken word track that is uh, Ab Soul's outro. And from the sound of things, I think he and a lot of the people who took the time to produce the instrumentals on this album were heavy into Kanye's last album. Overall, it's just a really young album that feels wise beyond its years. Because considering some of the dark and abstract stuff that Kendrick raps about on this LP, he's either much older than he says he is, or he's put a lot more thought than your average 20-something has into just the world at large and existence. I mean, I kind of knew I was in for something different just from the first track alone, Fuck your ethnicity, which kind of starts off with this smoky, deep voice narrator talking next to a campfire, and he pops up throughout the album, and that leads into a song that points out fighting over skin color, religion, ethnicity is pointless. The mood kind of lightens up on the second track a little bit though, Hold Up, which uh, in that song, Kendrick kind of muses in his head about having sex with a stewardess on a plane. And it's funny how he introduces himself and his personality and his worldview a little bit more, even when he's just kind of joking around. And in this song, he actually spits one of my favorite lines on the album, which uh, actually is, Wicked as 80 reverends in a pool of fire, with devils holding hands. From a distance, don't know which one is a Christian. Damn. On the song ADHD, Kendrick kind of talks about drugs, among other things, kind of eroding the attention spans and, and values and, and health of pretty much my generation. And this theme comes up again and again and again on the album, using drugs as a way to kind of tune out. And not in a really joyous or, or happy way. Kendrick kind of seems unsure and, and uneasy about where his generation is headed, rapping about how kind of reckless or directionless. But Keisha's song, to me, is one of the most vivid and, and depressing on here, one of the most notable stories on this album, but I don't want to ruin all the storylines for you guys. For the most part, Kendrick's flows on this album are just like the ones on those tracks, really laid back, 
but there's kind of a lot to think about in what he says. There are points on this LP where he goes harder, and that makes for a really, you know, kind of nice peak, a nice standout, like on the track Ronald Reagan era, or Rigor Mortis, where he's literally rapping so fast and for so long that his voice is getting higher because he's almost out of breath. But I do want to talk about the beats a little bit more before I finish this off. Many of them are so good that even when a hook is weak, I still love it. I think the silliest hook on this entire LP is easily spiteful chant. And you know what? The epic horns on that track, the deep bass, the hard drums, just the atmosphere of, of the instrumental itself is just so good I can't hate the track. I really love the uh, soulful singing about screwed up kids on Ronald Reagan era. I like the synthesizers on this thing, the organ sounds, the bass sounds. There are just so many jazzy samples throughout this LP that just reminds me of uh, anything A Tribe Called Quest would have would have made a track out of. And even though there are more electronic moments on here, there are poppier moments on here, there are jazzier moments, uh, it all just comes together so well because Kendrick is delivering this really consistent personality and message over every song. So none of it feels misplaced, none of it really feels far-fetched. Most of the beats on this LP are credited to people who seem to be a part of this this uh, producer collective, Digiphonics. Uh, another producer on here credited as THC has a lot of uh, beats on here as well, and even J. Cole has a credit on here as well. Pretty much on section 80, it's it's cut and dry for me. I love the words, I love the rhyming, I love the messages, the personality is great, the instrumentals are, are fantastic, better than you would expect on a project that is so kind of low-key. I do have a few problems with some of the weak hooks on here. I think, like I said earlier, Kendrick could be a little more enthusiastic on his stuff, and, and because he is as laid back as he is, some of his guest rappers overshadow him a little bit, like BJ the Chicago Kid and Ab Soul. And it's not necessarily because they're technically more proficient than he is, but, you know, he's just got that relaxed approach that isn't as ear-grabbing as somebody who is more urgent. I'm feeling a light to decent eight on this thing. Loved it for the most part, have a lot of love for this album, I like where this guy is going. This LP lasted for an hour and it didn't bore me once. He's obviously advanced past his previous efforts and I'm excited to see him do that more in the future. Uh, what do you think of this thing? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Why? And what do you think I should review next? Anthony Fantano, Kendrick Lamar, Section 80, forever.